So many of you have been getting in touch already. So thank you very, very much uh, for all of your texts and tweets and calls. Uh, we've been talking ta we've been talking a lot about the Villa perspective of yeah. things, Trevor. Shall we get to a, a Manchester City fan, Dominic, who's been waiting to have his say on all of this? Uh, morning to you, Dominic. Morning, Dominic. Morning, both. Uh, Splash in the cash. Quick, it's just a quick one, really. Um, I think when Trev was at City... Um, I think a lot of football fans are actually quite fickle. Sean Wright Phillips left us in 2005. Correct. And that wasn't for money. That was to go and better himself to win things. Yeah. Now, I think it's exactly the same thing with Grealish, really. He's, he's a Villa fan. He's a Villa man. I don't think it's money motivated. No. Um, the Villa fans, all right, they might have a bit of ambition, but I think they're quite deluded. They're not even in Europe. They're not going to win anything this year. They're not going to win anything next year. So I don't see what the gripe is with Grealish coming to do better to win things. I agree with that, Dominic. But talk to me about this. What is Pep going to do? <laughs> because Manchester City have got so many attacking midfielders. They've got no striker apart from Jesus. What, what's he going to do? Because surely this must be an indication that players are going to leave. Yeah, potentially. But I think Grealish for me is a player we need. Um, I think at times last season when De Bruyne's not there, we look lost around the edge of the box. Grealish gives us something different where he'll drive at a defender, commit the foul, win things. I think obviously with a false nine, it, it works a treat where you can play Sterling in the middle, Jesus, Torres. We've got a number of options. Yeah. So I, I don't know if City will sell because I think people are forgetting they're going on about the money we've spent, but we've actually probably bought in around £60 million from other transfers already this summer. Yeah. Dominic, Good call. Thank you very much for your views on that situation. It is interesting, isn't it? And I keep referring to it as being raw, and I think it is. Uh, and whenever a player moves on, it's very rare that we all go, oh, yeah, cheerio, then we wave you off, especially when you feel as though your club is doing all the right things in the market. You're there's so many positive signs to come out of Aston Villa so you can yeah. sort of understand why there are some Villa fans who are very, very uh, disappointed about this. But also at Villa fans, you have to remember you've been buying players from other teams too. So it, it all goes around. That's just what yeah. football is, unfortunately. But how about this one from Paul Jinx, who says, Jack has bailed on the club that's made him. Only signed a five-year deal less than 12 months ago, saying he believed in the project. Ten trophies will mean nothing at City, he says, compared to Villa. Going on to call him a Judas. Is well, what I, I can't agree with that because uh, Aston Villa have accepted the bid. So it's obviously a bid that they couldn't turn down. They thought it was a bit a bid worthy of not turning down and, and giving the option to Jack. Now, Jack's got four years left on his contract. He could have stayed. But he obviously sees the ambition at Manchester City. He sees mm -hmm. the opportunity at Manchester City. And he's taken it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just normal football business. I think when you look at that and you look at what's what's going on at the White Hart Lane Stadium, I mean, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? It's completely, completely yeah. wrong. So, yeah, no, I think Jack's got every right to, to, to go to speak to Manchester City, to take his medical and to sign for Manchester City. And the club have sold him and they're happy for him to go. So I think the fans should be as well. And a few people have, have been messaging on a similar theme. John, the City fan, saying this. It's great news for City and English, English football heading into a World Cup. A lot of money and pressure, but surely funded by prize money, he's saying, and, and player outgoings. Uh, the City owners, so John says, should be lauded for continuing to put money into mm. football. Uh, champions can't stand still. That is what we are always told, John, the City fan. But there there are a few people, just that first part of the text, that are echoing that same thought that this is good for England, the national team, yeah, when you think I agree. about a World Cup and what maybe will benefit Jack Grealish in moving to Manchester City to be working with Pep Guardiola. And what message, very quickly, Trevor, does this send about Pep Guardiola? Does this sign, this sort of a signing, this intent from City show you that perhaps Pep Guardiola is in this for the long haul? I think so. I thought that for a while. You know, um, before Prior to coming to Manchester City, you know, he was at, what was it, Bayern Munich, three years, and then he went for a sabbatical in New York, yeah, and yeah. I think that's where Manchester City got hold of him and, and uh, told him about the project that they had in place for him. But after a few years, he had, a, listen, he had a bumpy first year, Pep Guardiola, he didn't win the league, it, people were still questioning the way of football and, and his style of football and his principles and... I think he had a difficult time and he looked rattled by the media and by some of the questions that people within the media were asking him. But I think once he got over the line with the Premier League and that and the silverware started to come, I think he's bought into the culture of the country. He's bought into the culture of our football. He realises how competitive it is on so many different levels compared to maybe La Liga or even uh, the Bundesliga. And he's addicted. And I think he loves it. It's and, a challenge. And I think sure. now... 
I honestly think he's starting to look at managers' records like Sir Alex. I really do. I think he, he loves the, the club that much. And listen, he's being rewarded. He's got great players. He's bringing in better players. It's a fantastic job to have. And I feel that's how he feels. And, you know, if you've got a humble manager who can stay humble like that and stay hungry to win things, why would the club want to change it? And, and why would he want to move to a different club? Let's get Jordan, the Villa fans' perspective on all this. Morning to you, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Morning, Absolute Jordan. pleasure. So, Grealish, it looks as though his future is elsewhere. Are you happy or you're angry? Uh, I'm not angry. Uh, I'm obviously absolutely devastated. Um, uh, if I'm honest, I think the word that I want to describe uh, a few Villa fans at the moment is embarrassing. Um, I think if you look at what he's done for the club, he came down with pretty much the, the worst Villa team I've seen in my lifetime. He stayed with us, had the opportunity to sign for Spurs, signed a new contract, dragged us through for promotion. He then kept us in the Premier League, pretty much single-handedly on his own at times. Could have gone to Man United, which would have been easier for him to go last season. Signed another contract, and he's now put us in a position where we're out of a relegation fight. I think we're quite a comfortable mid-table team. Uh, we're, we, we've got our own fate now to push on and maybe get into Europe. But uh, a lot of the fans are saying that he's one of our own. And if he's one of your own, you, you want to see him do well. And I think realistically, he's one of the best players in European football at the moment. He deserves to be winning Premier League, Champions League player of the season he deserves these things and I just look at our youth academy and the players coming through I think I'm ready for the next Jack Grealish and he, he goes in my blessing and I think we've got a good team ahead of us Jordan thank you Thanks, that's Jordan. a different perspective on the whole situation from a villa angle in terms yeah. of looking at the benefits of Jack Grealish moving on maybe it will bring through the next Jack Grealish and also the money that's been brought into to villa and how they may well be may well be able to spend that wisely well not only is he left the legacy with giving the, the football club 100 million pounds but also he will have inspired some of them academy players yeah. you know he was an academy player himself he's come through you know, it's not been plain sailing. He's had bumps on the way, as we all know, and they're well documented. But I think the way that he's got over them bumps and uh, he's readdressed certain things in his life, he's become unbelievably hard working. I speak to a lot of people who go to the Villa uh, training complex and he's first in at six in the morning. He's, he's addicted to the gym. He's addicted to improving himself. And I think that's why you get the, you're seeing the rewards and you're seeing the performances. And I think he's a great example to young players. You know, you're going to make mistakes when you're young. You're going to have little hiccups. But get back to the fundamentals, work your socks off, go in, do more, better yourself, both as a footballer and as a person. And I think that's this is the result we're seeing from Jack Grealish. If you want to have your say, you know what you have to do. 08717 four is the number to call us on. Text us at 81089 or tweet us at TalkSport. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk sport.